Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, Judge Mershon on Tuesday has modified Donald Trump's gag order. Um, the gag order after the trial was left in place and Trump's attorneys were uh, made files asking Judge Mershon to lift the gag order. Um, part of the gag order does remain in place. Other parts have been lifted. Um, Judge Mershon put a five-page ruling out there saying, that the gag order was meant to protect the integrity of the judicial proceedings and that protections for witnesses and jurors are no longer applied now that the trial has ended and the jury has been discharged. It would be, Judge Bashan also said, it's a strong preference to continue barring Trump from commenting about jurors, but he couldn't justify doing so. Um, the judge did leave in place a separate order that prohibits Trump and his lawyers from disclosing the identities of the individual jurors or their home or work addresses. The Todd Blanche said that that information has been destroyed. Let's read on that. Um, and Judge Mershon said there's ample evidence to justify continued concern for the uh, jurors. He also left in place a ban on Trump commenting about court staffers, the prosecution team and their families until Trump is sentenced, writing that they, those people, must continue to perform their lawful duties free from threats, intimidation, harassment and harm. It does not prevent Trump from commenting about the judge or Alvin Bragg. Uh, so Trump could go after Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. He can go after the judge. He can go after Alvin Bragg. He um, cannot release. He can go after the jurors. He can't release their name or their contact information or anything along those lines. So... Trump's lawyers, of course, say it's an outrage, a miscarriage of justice. It's, you know, all the things that they have if Trump's just not allowed to send his rabid base towards his perceived enemies, that somehow that's a violation of Trump's First Amendment rights. Ain't it a great country we live in? All right, so let's look at the energy around uh, Judge Mershon lifting this gag order here, and then we will go to... Um, the jurors and see if they're going to get doxxed or not. Okay. Entertainment purposes only, as per usual. What's going on with uh, this gag order and this ruling? <sighs> the burden. The burden's been lifted for Trump. He can, you know, Trump was looking forward to this because he wants to trash all these people during his rallies and probably during the presidential debates too, since he's blaming Biden for weaponizing the New York State Justice Department amongst all the other crazy, insane things that he says. But I don't think this uh, this decision was made lightly. Judge Mershon knows what Trump is capable of doing. He knows what Trump followers are capable of doing, but he's also bound by the law. And in this case, the law is inadequate for the person who is hell-bent on breaking it crossed with the magician card so he came up with um his ruling that he is hoping will still you know it'll it'll protect people that it can still protect within the confines of the law but there's only so much he can do <laughs> he's, he's a magician not a miracle worker underneath it all judge Rashawn's trying to show integrity um, he's not delusional. He knows that uh, the attacks are going to begin anew um, and that this is what's going to happen. Now, if you look at this, I can also look at this from Trump, a burden being lifted, an opportunity to further um, spread his uh, paranoia and his delusions to other people. But we'll focus on Judge Mershon. In the past, you got the four of wands. You know, this is... Um, the jury coming back with their verdict, their guilty verdict. And that's when Trump's uh, attorneys are arguing that the gag order should be lifted. Current situation is the fool card. Uh, I'm not saying Judge Mershon is a fool. Um, it's just that that phase of the trial is over with. He's delayed lifting the gag order for several, a few to several weeks. So that gives time for the jurors to do what they need to do to protect themselves. You know, the Michael Cohens and the Stormy Daniels and the other witnesses, you know, they're already out there, but the jurors are 
should continue to be protected. Again, I'm really focusing on the jurors here. The overarching energy of this is judgment. And again, he's a judge. He has to follow the laws just like everybody else. If nothing else, he not only has to follow them, he has to enforce them. And he's following the law as best he can. Uh, the lesson to be learned is temperance. Um, again, he, he gave some time. He didn't lift the gag or gag order right away he's given time for um people's anxieties and their tension to tamp down a little bit you can imagine if he lifted the gag order the same day the verdict came out trump would have been raging on people 24 7 uh but he's allowed some time to pass so you know tempers can cool down Outcome is the Ace of Swords. Um, this is just this is the American justice system at work. This is how it this is how it works. Now I want to do an overlay reading here on if this, you know, asking about it from Judge Marchand's perspective. The same cards, Donald Trump. This burden has been lifted. He's now free to say everything that he wants to say about the people that he wants to say it about. And it's going to be more of his delusion about, you know, the deep state going after him and the, the corrupt Biden administration. And he's never met Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen's a grifter and all these things. Um, in the past, this is Trump getting the verdict, his guilty verdict. And now and now with the gag order being lifted on Trump, he can start anew. Is he going to start a new path and, and take the high road? Or is he going to walk right off the cliff? Um, he has to be careful with what he's saying. Because obviously he wants to, to me, he wants to use this for his rallies. He wants to use this in the debates. But you have to be really careful about defaming people and um, putting people in harm's way. Because this could lead to another court case. This could lead to civil cases. Uh, the lesson to be learned, he is being given an opportunity to show that he is mature and in control of his emotions. I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. If he cannot, there's going to be legal consequences for him. Now, again, Trump could also use this to say, you know, I'm justified in doing this because I don't have this gag order anymore. Well, it'd be interesting to see how his rhetoric changes. Um, yeah, it was Dave, again, it was Dave Johnson I, w I watched yesterday. He was uh, <laughs> seeing that um, Judge, Mer this, this fits in with Dave Johnson's timeline for Mood Ride. Uh, Dave just had a video up the other day where he was seeing Judge Marchand getting a, um, a spiritual black eye, as it were, that, you know, right up to when Judge Marchand's getting ready to sentence him, Donald Trump does something so off the, off the cuff, so off, off norms that it's like an assault on the judge or the judge's family or something that is just an absolute insult. And, you know, kind of the daring the judge to do something about it type of thing. And the judge may just do that. I believe that was Dave that did that. I was also listening to Kim from Intuit View. Uh, but I think it was Dave that did that particular reading. Because I remember thinking that it was, um, he was channeling and he was seeing pictures. Okay. Um, with regards to the jury... Todd Blanche said the jury information was destroyed. That might be true. I'm surprised you didn't say the original materials sent to us by the courts, not the stuff that Donald Trump photocopied when we weren't looking. You know, that I'm surprised he didn't qualify that. Um, was the jury information destroyed and there are no copies of it anywhere that are ready for dissemination? Because just because Todd Blanche thinks that, you know, yeah, Evan Corcoran, Corcoran was told that uh, Donald Trump turned over all the all the classified information, right? And that turned out to be a huge freaking lie to the point where he drafted a memo and then went and signed it. It made some other poor slob sign that memo and he was smart for doing that. Now, Todd Blanche, are you about to walk right into that same buzzsaw? Did you not learn? 
was all that jury information uh, destroyed? There's the justice card. It's supposed to be. Maybe, and I, I suspect Todd Blanche and his, his team destroyed the jury information that they had in their possession. It's crossed by the Nine of Wands, but it's the penultimate battle. It's waiting for something else to drop here. Uh, what's underneath it? The Page of Pentacles. Uh, messaging about money or values. Um, was all that information dropped and, and destroyed? Todd Blanche, I know, I, I think Todd Blanche thinks so, but there's a part of him that knows he can't trust Trump. So that's kind of a, you know, I don't want to say a ballsy move, but that's kind of a, this is a calculated risk that he's taking saying that all that jury information is done. In this way, this, is this actually, this card, when I first see it, reminds me of the jurors just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, does somebody have their shoe? Does somebody have their names and addresses here? Um, currently, Four of Swords. Uh, no, folks are trying desperately to get that information out on the jurors. And one or two sites listed some information. Don't know if they were accurate or not. But things have been kept quiet for now. Current situation is the Ten of Pentacles. You can imagine that if somebody has a copy of that information, that there are some people willing to pay quite a bit of money for that information to cause, um, to send a message, not only to the jurors on this trial, but to jurors on future trials, uh, what's going to happen if they're jurors. It's going to get out. The overarching energy is the four of coins. Look at all the coins here too. Um, things are being kept quiet for now, being kept under wraps. I think there's big money chasing this information if it's out there. And I think that's what um, Todd Blanche is worried about. He knows there's a lot of money out there chasing this information. Can that information be kept on the down low? Is it under control? Have they lost control of it? That's what he doesn't know. He knows that his office ha maintained control. And that everything's locked down, but he can't talk for everybody who might who could have gotten access to it. That's not good. The lesson to be learned is the Seven of Swords. Somebody sneak. Somebody's got that information. Somebody snuck in and got it. I don't know. If, I don't think he knows it, but somebody did. This is not good. <laughs> somebody got in, got that information. and let the games begin. I think that you're going to find that jury information is going to get leaked out. Todd Blanche is going from, you know, I hope nothing happens, hope nothing happens to, I should have known. I should have known that somebody would have gotten in there and they're going to sell it. Remember that fool card I pulled in the first reading? I think Todd Blanche. <laughs> I should look at his career, huh? Todd Blanche's career needs to be looked at too, but that's a secondary concern right now. Okay. Um, will the juror, will any jurors be? What's going to be the impact of, of my suspected reading that that information is available? What's going to happen with the jurors? Or what's the energy around the jurors with, uh, with the thought that this information may very well be out there and leakable? Now that the gag order has been lifted. We'll, we'll find out soon. We'll find out rather quickly if, uh, you know, will the, basically, will the jurors get doxxed? Is there enough information out there that the jurors will be doxxed? And doxxed is when uh, their information is shared, uh, their personal information is shared in a way that's detrimental to them, to cause, cause harm to them. Queen of Pentacles. There's the information, it's valuable. Oh boy. Ain't no brawl like a drunken hillbilly brawl. We got the Queen of Pentacles, we've got the, you know, 
trying to be practical and protecting uh, the jury here versus the drunken mob that's going to go raging looking for them. Um, I think one thing that, again, here comes the temperance card as the, uh, the underlying energy here. By allowing several weeks to go by, a few to several weeks to go by, the drunken hillbilly brawl is going to be a lot less intense. Um, because they've had time to accept Donald Trump's uh, felony convictions and um, all eyes are going to be back on the judge as the judge sentences Trump. They'll, they'll forget the... Um, the jurors soon enough. It's unfortunate, you know, again, there, there is a gag order with um, releasing the jurors information. That gag order is still in place, but Trump can go after the jurors and cause, um, cause problems. But again, I think the temperance card is going to lower the temperature. I think the judge was at least wise to keep it in place like that. In the past, you got the star card. I'm not, I'm not going to read that as Stormy Daniels with her adult entertainment. I think this, again, we're focusing on the jury. Um, well, it could be Stormy Daniels in the past. Uh, well, yeah, let's, let's make it Stormy Daniels. In the past, Stormy Daniels, a lot of the anger and aggression has been directed at her. She Because she was pretty much the face of, of uh, the hush money payments, right? this whole election interference, she was the face of it. So she's in the past. That's who the hillbillies were uh, brawling about. Current situation is the Queen of Swords. How are the jury going to do? It's a very matter-of-fact thing. Um, this is just their new reality. The one woman got off the jury because she was just terrified of what was going to happen to her if she stayed on. And these jurors made their choices, and unfortunately, there's going to be consequences for it. And they shouldn't have to deal with those consequences. Um, yeah. Overarching energy. Again, I think some of those jurors are going to lay low. Some may move. Some may take down their, their social media accounts basically i think this is not necessarily them moving out of their houses although some may do that if they're renting they may move i think also with these jurors what will happen is you take down your social media platforms so you're harder to find and you're harder to attack because uh you you have less of a a footprint out there for people to search out <clears throat> the lesson to be learned is the ace of wands The drunken hillbillies, they only know how to use a stick to smash things. They're not, uh, they're not sophisticated in that regard. But <clears throat> this could also lead to more legal actions, especially if it could be tied back to Trump or the Trump campaign for leaking that information down. Out. Outcome is the four of swords. I think, okay, so... This Ace of Wands is probably the hillbillies want to do something about it, but it's kind of again with the Temperance card here, it, they're they're late to the party. They've they've already gone after Stormy Daniels and got a lot of their anger out, and it could be that you know they know Trump's been convicted, but I do think that the jurors will keep a lower social media profile, and it's you know the the. the, the the mob is going to go looking for them, but they can't really attack what they can't find. Yeah, and then the outcome is the Four of Swords. I think that the, the wise jurors will let lie low, especially on social media, and just let time go by. And as more time goes by, the outrage decreases because the part of the whole GOP Donald Trump thing is to find new things to be outraged on every week. And soon enough, we will have a January 6th trial. Soon enough, we'll have a Mar-a-Lago documents case trial. Soon enough, we're going to have a Georgia election interference trial. 
Soon enough, we're going to have another E. Jean Carroll defamation lawsuit. And, you know, at that point, the whole New York 34 felony convictions is going to seem rather quaint when they're going against some big federal cases or even more money. Um, I also think that, you know, come November, when Donald Trump uh, loses the election and loses in December, he's lost all his ability to really succeed court saying the election was stolen, then he's facing, you know, crim uh, jail to prison time and court cases that aren't going to be delayed for him anymore. And folks are going to find out the real truth about this guy, especially as he tries to flee the country. Um, they're not going to be as interested in committing felonies against jurors in New York. Somehow that's just not going to be as a, an appealing thing to some uh, some true faithful in Alabama or Florida to go up to New York to find some juror somewhere. You know, maybe he's not worth it. Lastly, Todd Blanche. Oh yeah, all that information's been destroyed. How's your career looking, Todd? After all this plays out, you represented Trump. You said all this stuff. Did you not learn anything from Evan Corcoran? Page of Swords. This is either Todd Blanche being kind of a rookie at things or the spy was in Todd Blanche's office. Yep, the spy was in his office. There's that Page of Pentacles was the underlying card over here. And the spy, the spy got paid. They got paid some good money for doing for finding this information and sharing that information. Uh, they're gonna find out. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna find out. They'll figure out who it is. Certainly, revelation. This information got out, and they'll be able to tra trace it back to Todd Blanche's office, and they'll probably know who it was that did that. You know, <laughs> the the, uh, the staffer that suddenly shows up in. <laughs> in the new cyber beast or something like that. Huh, where did you get $150,000 for a new Tesla? Current situation is five of swords. He is going to get reamed for this. He is absolutely going to get reamed for this. Five of swords. No, no mercy. Um, yeah, too late. No, if this person lets the cat out of the bag, it's too late. And talk, you know, this is one of those things about being in a leadership position. Yeah, you might have had a bad egg employee, but guess who's going to be held to account? Nobody's going to remember the bad egg employee. They're going to hold Todd Blanche to account. Heartbreak, betrayal. God, it'd be funny if, if Todd Blanche had, like, had family members <laughs> that were doing that and they did this. But whoever it was, it was somebody trusted underneath them. Almost like it was family. Again, I don't know who Todd Blanche employs, but this was a trusted person in this in this office or the person who leaks it i think is linked to todd blanche and it was somebody that they trusted that, that todd blanche trusted the lesson to be learned is temperance again the one saving grace that we have from this is judge Mershon's gag orders the temperature's gone way down and the damage could have been so much worse but just like MAGA means making attorneys get attorneys, this is what happens when you hitch your wagon to Donald Trump and you want good things to come out of evil. Nothing good grows out of the, uh, out of basically the sewer that is Donald Trump. Nothing good comes out of it. Only bad things come out. That double card literally is, these are your chickens coming home to roost. That Donald Trump is corrupt, and he embodies corruption, and he brings out the best corruption, the brightest, shiniest, most wonderful corruption. For those listening, don't see the eye roll there for sarcasm in people. Just look at how many people in his orbit are just absolutely corrupt. Or even the ones that had a moral compass, they lose their moral compass. It is just the most amazing superpower that Donald Trump possesses. Causing people to do things 
that make them lose their morals and their ethics, even to the point where they could face prison or incarceration for it. Legal consequences. <laughs> you know, better beware. That's enough for this. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your likes, shares, comments, everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm so this video makes it out to a wider audience. Uh, to folks discovering this channel recently or for the first time, welcome to the channel. Glad you found us. Uh, if you like this video, check out my other channels, Tarot the Seven Seas, which is my uh, international channel, in Twin Tarot with Gary and David, uh, a channel just like this on political events uh, that I do with my identical twin brother, Gary. It looks just like this, except there's two of us. We sound exactly alike, and we laugh at the same things. So it's a bit more entertaining. Barrels of Monkeys, watch Twin Terror with Gary and David to find extra entertainment beyond what they already provide as the gold standard of fun. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.